Like the wind, unseen but present, moving and felt. Like the seasons, changing at exactly the right time. Like the pull of gravity that keeps me firmly planted to the ground beneath my feet. Your faithfulness. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Immovable, unshakable. Your love is steadfast and you keep every one of your promises. You will never leave and you never forsake the ones you love. You finish everything you start and never have you spoken a word in vain. As undeniable as the sun, rising day in and day out without fail, and just as certain as the setting of that same sun, you are faithful. Part two this morning of Take the Land 2024. Take the Land 2024. And really, this series is, a, I don't know many parts will be, may not be even many more parts. We'll see how it goes. But it's about ensuring that all people everywhere have the opportunity to embrace the fullness of all that has been freely provided for them and to live in the fulfillment of all of God's promises. Our, our mission statement as New Wine Church is the people of the world, our mission, vision statement, the people of the world under the lordship of Jesus Christ. Because this is the only way that the next part is possible. Saved, healed, and delivered. Living in the fullness of the salvation and healing and deliverance that Jesus provided for them at the cross. The people of the world under the lordship, submitted to the lordship with a declaration that Jesus Christ is Lord. He had already prayed it and declared it this morning. Every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 18 and verse 3. It says, Then Joshua said to the children of Israel, How long will you neglect to go and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers has given you? Now, this is in the context of there were still, I think, seven tribes who had not come into their inheritance yet. And Joshua makes this statement. Then Joshua said to the children of Israel, How long? Will you neglect to go? And I believe this word is coming down to us. Remember, these things are left to us. We saw this the last time. These are left to us as examples. Amen. The, this word is coming down to us as the people of God, as the children of God today. How long will you neglect to go and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers has given you? But get the context. Has given you. So let, let's begin this morning with some declarations of faith that we used to make every week many years ago. In our old Key Street days, I believe we began every Sunday with these statements. Well, are you ready for this? Let's say this together. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. And I can have what God says I can have. See, you need to understand, these are the declarations of a people who know that they know that they know that they know that they have already been given everything. Amen. And so they are going to take everything that's been given to them. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 2 to 4 says this, Grace, listen to the language here, come on, Grace and peace be multiplied to you 
in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these, through what? Through these promises, you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption or the depravity that is in the world through lust. You know what lust does? Lust takes what hasn't been given. Lust takes what hasn't been given. But love takes what has been given. I just got that straight down the pipe right now, by the way. <laughs> lust is the way of the world. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. The desire to acquire, the desire to impress. Desire to indulge. Lust, 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 lust. But lust takes what hasn't been given, but love takes what has been given. Mm -hmm. What has been given in love. Love responds. Our love responds to our Father's love who has given us all things. So in this year of fulfilled promises, it is those who take everything that has been given who will see all of these promises fulfilled in their lives. If you do not take what you've already been given, you will not see these promises fulfilled. Remember, we are saved by grace through faith. We are saved by grace, but it's always through faith, through believing that that grace has been made so freely available to us and accessing that grace through faith by taking God at his word, by believing his Promises. And according to Romans chapter 5 verse 1, it's by being justified by faith that we have peace with God. So at the beginning it says, grace and peace be multiplied to you. Amen. God's in the multiplication business. Amen. 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 We are saved by grace through faith and it is by being justified by faith that we have peace with God. We've taken God at his word. We've chosen to receive and to take everything that he has already freely given. Amen. Without faith, there is no access to his grace. And without faith, there is no peace. So all of God's promises of the superabundance of his grace are contained in his word and are accessed through faith by simply and only believing what he has promised. As I said before, our Father, our Father is in the multiplication business. He is the God of increase. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. But listen to this, through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. That's knowledge of, not knowledge about. That's right. I was meditating on this just yesterday afternoon into the evening and, and this just rose up in my spirit that the first man, the first Adam gave up his knowledge of God by listening to and accepting knowledge about God that was a lie I'll say that again it's a very powerful revelation if you can receive it this morning the very first Adam the first man gave up his knowledge of God, he was created to know God to have knowledge of God, to walk with him in close fellowship and intimacy with him. And he gave that up by listening to and accepting knowledge about God that was a lie. Nothing has changed in regard to mankind's failure to access all of the multiplied grace and peace that has already been provided for us by a loving God who is only ever and always good all the time. Somehow or other, that enemy enters the camp with knowledge about God that's always a lie, and it's always a lie against the character of God. That somehow God is withholding something from us. That somehow God's not good all the time. I mean, let's, let's listen to Job. I mean, some people live by the gospel according to Job, but let's listen, listen to Job's testimony at the end of all of his negative experiences and, 
negative experiences that he had falsely attributed to God, by the way. Yes. Listen to his testimony. Job 42, verse 5 to 6. This is the amplified version. I had heard of you only by the hearing of the ear, but now my spiritual eye sees you. Therefore I loathe my words and abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Yeah. I heard of you. I, I was going by, I, I had heard of you only by the hearing of the ear. And what I'd heard was obviously flawed. Mm-hmm. But now my spiritual eye sees you. Therefore I loathe the words that I spoke in the past. I loathe all these words I spoke against you. Yeah. Abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Repentance is the gateway to life. You know that, don't you? The oil of intimacy is the only legitimate fuel for the flame of ministry. Yeah. He said the oil of intimacy is the only legitimate fuel for the flame of ministry. Knowledge of, not knowledge about. In fact, the scripture says knowledge puffs up. Yeah. Yeah. What knowledge is that? That's the knowledge about. Of the making of many books, it says in Ecclesiastes, there is no end and much study is nothing but a weariness of the flesh. Mm-hmm. As I've been meditating on the reasons why many people have neglected to possess the fullness of their inheritance, it, it struck me, and this is things that have come to me many times in the past also, but it came afresh to me, where there are two areas of the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord that Many seem to be lacking. This is not a criticism. It's just a, uh, it's supposed to try and help us. They seem to be lacking as a part of their experience as believers. And the first one is this. The first is that many have never really, would appear to have never really experienced, I just listened to people's testimonies, and I, I discovered that many have never really experienced conviction of sin. And so because of that, they're lacking in a reverence for God and a genuine fear of the Lord. I call fear of the Lord, I say it's synonymous with faith. Because those who don't have a fear of the Lord think they can take or leave God's word. Whereas those who have a genuine fear of the Lord recognize that they live. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that God speaks. That's the source of life. That's the source of our new creation life. That's the source of the life that we were created to live and to enjoy in all of its fullness. The people who have never... You see, sin is falling short of God's glory. Sin is unbelief. Sin is, sin, is, sin is rejecting what God says and running with lust. Taking what's not been given. Instead of freely taking what has been freely given by your Father in heaven who loves you. Sin is ignoring God. People, some people have never experienced that conviction of sin. That conviction that carries that, 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 that oh wow... I missed it so bad, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I've ignored you my whole life. Man, I mean, I've, I've experienced conviction of sin, and, and I, my, my experience, I wouldn't necessarily want everybody to have to endure it because I, I, many, much of it was endured in a bit of a religious environment. Where, 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 and I, I was hanging over the fires of hell for too long, to be honest. <laughs> I got well and truly roasted and and, and, and I, because there didn't seem to be a way out and it took longer I believe to come through that transition than it, than it was necessary to, to take but, but I believe it's so important to have that experience of that conviction of sin of, of how, how bad it is to miss out on God's best mm-hmm. so that's the first and the second is that there are many who have never experienced the manifest presence of God in a real and tangible way. Well, they've heard about it, but they've never experienced it. Mm -hmm. Not in a way where they're blessed with a true perspective of who they are in relation to him and who he is in relation to them because you can't be in his presence and not have that resolved. (laughs) That he is who he is and you are who you are. Jesus said, Jesus the word in the flesh said, of myself I can do nothing. 
And when you've experienced the manifest presence of God in a real and tangible way, you, 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 that, that's the revelation that comes to you of myself. I can do nothing, but hey, I'm in relationship with him. And with Christ, I, and through Christ, I can do all things. Yeah. You see, both of these, the first and the second of these things, they're both of these are a fruit of intimacy. Yes. Mark chapter 3, verses 13 to 15. And Jesus went up on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that's worthy maybe of a little bit of meditation for a while. <laughs> I mean, that might mess with some people's theology a little bit. And they came to him. Then he appointed twelve that they might be with him. That they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach. But you see, he knew that they weren't qualified to be sent out to preach unless they had been with him. Because the oil of intimacy is the only legitimate fuel for the flame of ministry. There are things that someone else can't teach you that you can only learn by being with him. That's right, amen. That he might send them out to preach and to have power. That is the Greek word there is exousia, authority to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. Without authority, power is illegitimate. We, we, we focused on power, power, power because Jesus said you shall receive power but hey, he said no, 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 I'm getting into another message I think I'll preach on that tonight Hallelujah. <laughs> true discipleship always takes place in the context of intimacy with Jesus being yes. with him yes. hearing him honouring yes. and worshipping him yes. how do you how do, how, Jesus said the Father is seeking those who will worship him in spirit and truth who are those who worship him in spirit and truth? Well, yes, you can come in with our hands up and, and we can shout and holler and all of these things are wonderful and dance in his presence and take up a tambourine and shake it as loud so the devils and the kingdoms of darkness are shaken. But there's worshiping him in truth. That's when you hear and apply what you hear. You turn your ear towards heaven. In that context, you're there to hear from heaven, to hear a word from heaven, and to apply that word in your life. If you don't do that, you're not a worshiper in truth. That's right. One of the definitions for even that word truth is accuracy. So you take what he says and you accurately apply it in your life. Amen. And you don't allow anything to move you from your confession and profession of faith that Jesus Christ is Lord and what he has promised is what he will fulfill. Amen. That's a worshipper. <laughs> That's a worshipper. Remember I said, I've said it several times but the word the Lord gave me in, in, when, I was, when we were in America in, 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 in July, August there and, I, and he said there's three things, only three things you will need to live in the fullness of the life that I created you to live. Humility, integrity and the spirit of the Lord humility integrity but you see he invites us to humble ourselves we are under his mighty hand <laughs> that means all the limits are off yeah. that means you, you can speak like you know that you know that you know that God will do what he said yeah. and some people will call you proud and arrogant because, but you're humble in God's eyes yeah. because you're humbling yourself under his mighty hand you say my God is able he will do it he will do it for me Oh, no, that's proud and arrogant. No, 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 that's the truth. <laughs> I said it, true spiritual integrity is knowing that we are one spirit with him. Amen. We're one spirit with him. He is joined to the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. He who is joined to the Lord has become one spirit with him. That's true spiritual integrity. All the knowledge we have, we know where it comes from. Any wisdom that we bring forth, we know where it comes from. Not from our great intellect. Not from our learning about him. No, it comes from that relationship with him, that intimacy with him, that connection with him. It's his wisdom. We like to call them the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and that's what they are. They're the charisms. They're the, they're the, they're the, they're the, even though that word charis is so hard to define, 
that Greek word charis, it's so hard to define it. You need to go, go and study that out for yourself. It's just like, but these are the, this is the stuff that flows through you out of intimacy. Yes. You're sitting talking to someone and, and the wisdom of God flows through you to that person that unlocks their prison yes. and releases them. Amen. You didn't get it in a book. No. No. You didn't get it through book learning. You didn't get it through a 12-week course. You got it directly from heaven. Mm-hmm. Jesus sitting that well with a woman who, who nobody else wants to be anywhere near, and she doesn't want to be anywhere near them because all she hears is tittle tattle against her. Mm-hmm. All she sees is dirty looks and condescending looks and pharisaical, hypocritical looks everywhere she goes. And Jesus touches the sorest point in her life and he says, Go get your husband. And it unlocks her prison. It unlocks her shame. It unlocks her guilt. It's like when the doctor, when you were a wee boy or a wee girl and the doctor was called and, and you would say, where does it hurt? And he would poke you right there. Just to show it makes you a dead hurt. Dr. Jesus knows where to poke you, where it hurts, because he wants to be able to release you, to heal you. <laughs> All the hidden places of shame, he'll poke you right there. <laughs> the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to do what? To preach good news, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind. Amen. To bind up to heal the broken hearted. Wow, what an awesome, awesome anointing. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. To announce the, the free favours of the year when the free favours of God profusely abound. Amen. Humility, integrity, spirit of the Lord. God doesn't poke you because he, he, because he wants you to hurt. He pokes you because he wants your heart to be healed. That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Remember the Old Testament accounts of God's people are left to us as examples. Joshua chapter 1, verses 8 to 9. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. Isn't that awesome that God's heart is, that our way is prosperous and that we have good success? And the fact that it says good success points to the fact that there can be bad success. Not all success is good. Some people are very successful in this world and by this world's standards, but he doesn't want us to have that success. He wants to have good success. And it might even look the same, but it's still good success. Mm-hmm. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. You choose what you be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We said at the beginning, I am who God says I am. That's who I be. That's it. I can do what God says I can do. I am who I be. Mm-hmm. I can have what God says I can have because of who I be. That's why I will not, I will be strong and I will be of good courage and I will not be afraid and I will not be dismayed because the Lord your God is with you wherever you go because the Lord our God is with us, is with me wherever we go, wherever I go. God is speaking this to Joshua in the context of the fact he just started out by saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Everything that you've been familiar with, it's gone. Now you go, that that which you've been following, the man you've been following is now out of the way. He's gone. He's my servant. He's served his purpose and now he's gone, but now it's your turn. Now get up. Finish the job. See, Moses brought the people, and that's why it says in John chapter 1 that the the, the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. 
These things are left as, as examples. Moses, Joshua is like an example of Jesus. Moses brought the people the word of the Lord and the promises of the Lord. But the word of the Lord and the promises of the Lord on their own are not sufficient. You can have all of the word and you can have all of the promises, but you must obey the word and you must believe the promises. That's what's wrong with so much of that extreme, what is labeled that extreme grace message is that it's so passive. Just wait and everything will happen. Everything's been done, so just sit around and hope and don't even know. Just I don't know what you do. You just sort of live in the smoke. We are saved by grace through faith. We must obey the word and we must believe the promises. And if one generation failed to obey and failed to access all that God has promised, God doesn't change his word to accommodate their unbelief. He doesn't say, well, let's try this a bit different. Let's just race with this a little bit and yeah. rejig it. No, no, no. He simply restates the same word and the same promises to the next generation. That's it. Yeah. Amen. In verse 6, it's clear that even though the Lord swore to give the previous generation the land, they never took it. Yeah. And there is so much that the Lord has sworn and promised to give us, but we must take it. Every transaction is only completed when that which is given has been taken. Mm -hmm. So the Lord makes his will and purpose very clear. And then he emphasized to Joshua the reality of his continual presence. That's what we need. I said it earlier on this morning. We need to prioritize his presence. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because it's out of that place of intimacy. But we receive the oil of intimacy that becomes the fuel that that, that fuels the flame of ministry remember the the, the foolish virgins they thought they could play fast and loose Mm -hmm. amen when push came to shove there was no oil in their lamps Mm -hmm. we were supposed to learn that in Sunday school give me oil in my lamp keep me burning Give me oil in my lamp. <laughs> the oil has been provided. The oil has been given. Now you've got to take it. Yes. You've got to ensure that your lamp is full of oil. <laughs> or when push comes to shove, you're going to go out and discover, hang on a minute, I've got no resources to meet this. Even though everything had been freely provided, I didn't take what was provided. I thought I didn't really need it, or I thought I could leave it to another day, or I could catch up later. I had a, I had a preacher friend, and he, he, God had given him a very, a very strong, powerful, clear word of direction for his church, the church that he was leading. And he told, he told the folks on, on, on Sunday, you need to be here on Wednesday night. Because I have a word from the Lord that I'm going to release on Wednesday night and you need to be here to hear this word. Wednesday night. Some folks didn't bother showing up. Next Sunday, somebody came up to him and said, Oh, that word you brought on Wednesday night, can I have a tape? He says, you're too late. I can have a tape. I said, but you're too late, you missed it. You missed the word. And you missed something of of the power attached to that word because you you weren't there. You missed some of the supply of oil Mm -hmm. that God had for you there. You know where disappointment comes from? You missed your appointment. So many Christians are disappointed because they missed an appointment of intimate, with a, in a place of intimacy with the Lord where he was going to communicate something to them that was going to strengthen them and empower them and equip them for what was coming. Mm-hmm. The foolish virgins, they weren't ready for what was coming. Jesus coming. <laughs> the master was coming. The bridegroom was coming. And they had no oil in their lamps. Mm-hmm. They probably believed the lie that he, ah, well, where's the promise of his coming? <laughs> The Lord
Lord makes his will and purpose very clear and emphasizes the reality of his continual presence, but still the fulfillment of his will and purpose is dependent upon people accepting personal responsibility. Mm. Right. Man, if there's one word the church hates, it's responsibility. Yeah. Your flesh hates, not your spirit loves it. Give me responsibility, I'll take it. You've got to take what's been given. He's given you responsibility. And then you've got to take that personal responsibility. I've said it before. Freedom is spelled R-E-S-T-O-N-S-I-B-I-L-A-T-Y. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hope you followed that. <laughs> true freedom. We, we enter the true freedom that Jesus purchased on our behalf. And we're willing to take personal responsibility. You not know, take offense every five seconds. You have personal responsibility to deal with offence. Jesus said offences will come. You're living in an imperfect world, surrounded by imperfect people, and offences will come. You will have opportunities every single day to be offended. You have personal responsibility to deal with that offence, get it out of the way, and keep moving on. Amen. Hallelujah. Offence is a snare. Scandalon is the Greek word. It's the, it's the part of a bait stick on a trap, and it will hold you captive, and you won't go any further. You'll die in that place yeah. until you get released from it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. He says to be strong, to be of good courage. And he says, do not be afraid. That's my responsibility. I will not be afraid. Even if all of the hairs in my arms are sticking up yeah. vertical. <laughs> and the enemy's sulfur breath is all over me telling me what he's going to do next I will not be afraid I will not be dismayed I don't care what it looks like I will not be dismayed because the Lord our God is with us and if he is with us who can he is for us and who can be against us wherever we go that tells me something else you have to go It's in the context of going that you discover that he's with you. Believing that you're strong and of good courage and that you have no need to be afraid or dismayed because the Lord your God is with you so we can go with confidence. Remember it's essential that we walk through the six steps to personal transformation, information, meditation, revelation, motivation, application, transformation. If we are going to succeed... I don't want to come, I could go on and talk about that, you know that, but I love to talk about it. <laughs> Verse 10, Joshua chapter 1. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the camp and command the people, saying, Prepare provisions for yourselves. For within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. Prepare provisions for yourselves. That, 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 there's a personal responsibility there to prepare. Yep. Be ready to cross over and possess the land the Lord is giving you to possess. You see, the difference between the Old and the New Covenant, remember these things are left to us as exactly. examples. The difference between the Old and the New Covenant is that the provision has already been made. Yep. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. But it is still essential that we prepare our hearts to always be in readiness to stand fast in everything that has been provided whenever we need it. You've got to get that word into your heart. Right deep down there, you build your, your life upon that foundation that is Jesus Christ. And the grace and truth that came through him and you become a worshipper in spirit and truth and you be a, a person who has a, a continual, non-stop, never-ending attitude of gratitude that just knows how to give thanks to God for all that he's already done. Yeah. We read it in First Peter. He's already given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Yeah. Our hearts need to be prepared with that for whatever's coming, whatever we're going, whatever we're going to face. We are prepared because we have that established in our hearts and in our lives. Amen. Yes. Amen. We don't wait until symptoms attack our body to try and muster up some faith from somewhere to resist the attack. You wake up this morning feeling sick, you've got to say, no, we don't do sick. 
Because we do that with who we be. And are we already be the healed? You've got to do that every single time. I'm not talking fantasy. I'm not talking here. I'm talking about truth and reality because I know it works. I will, only, I will only stand here and tell you what I know works because I know it works. We live prepared. And we feed our faith every day. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that God speaks. You've got to feed yourself. The word of God every single day. Feed your faith. We speak as the healed every day. Amen. Oh, man. No, no, no. We don't do that. We do it who we be. We be the healed. Mm-hmm. Come on, come over here and do that. Come on, nobody will know. No, 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 we don't do that. We be the righteous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. After I got born again, one of the first prayer meetings I went to was a house fellowship somewhere. The guy that gave me a lift there on the way back, he... He opened this glove compartment, and I—I I remember I, I was—I was living in Berna at the time, and and, and, and uh, Church of Scotland Mans in Berna, and, and I remember the night I, I came to the Lord, I had a packet of Rothmans king size, and I put it on the fridge in the kitchen. And every time I passed that, it was like, <laughs> I went to this fellowship. And on the way back, the guy who had been a Christian for a lot longer than me, and he opened up the glove compartment, and he brought out 20 embassy red, and he, he opened them up and he says, Here, take one of them, nobody will know. This is just between you and me. I'm like an idiot. Like an idiot. I took that, and I was hooked on the things for, for I don't know how many years after that. And I fought, and I bit, and I scratched, and tried to get my way out of it. And one day I woke up and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you're free, you don't need to do that anymore. Mm-hmm. And that was the end of it. Yeah. Amen. But I never had to go through that. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't know that I'd be the righteous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> With power and authority in the name of Jesus to say no to every temptation, no matter who it comes through. Yeah. Hey, the serpent, the serpent, they were familiar with the serpent in the garden. But Satan had entered into the serpent. (laughs) Serpent used to walk around on legs. Didn't slide up like some, they'd be seeing all the pictures of the snake. No, he became that. He lost his destiny to walk on legs. (laughs) Now he's he's got a leg that's legless now. He's trying to get you legless. That's why they say, oh, come on, have a wee drink. Say, no, no, don't do that. I'd be the righteous. I'd be the righteous. People say, why do you not drink? I said, I'll tell you why I don't drink. Because all the reasons I used to drink no longer exist. And there were many. There were many reasons. You know, the Bible says there may be many reasons, but you're always without excuse. Reasons are not excuses. So Jesus dealt with all the reasons at the cross. So now there's no excuse. Some people think reasons and excuses are the same, but they're not. We live prepared. We feed our faith every day. We speak as the righteous. We speak as the healed. We speak as the delivered. Yeah. You know, over the years, I've heard people say things like, oh, well, if the Lord wants me to be baptized in the Spirit and to speak in tongues, I'm sure he will give it to me. Or people they'll say so sanctimoniously, oh, if the Lord wants me to be healed, he will heal me. It's just they've been wrongly programmed. Yeah. They've been programmed with a lie. Yeah. I'm not condemning you, Emily, or Chris. I'm just saying that language is the language of the liar. Mm-hmm. Because the Lord has already provided and given these things to all of us, but we must take them. You are born again righteous. You are born again healed. You are born again delivered from every oppressive influence in your life, from depression and every other ugly thing that the enemy tries to put back on you. You are born again delivered. Amen. You are born again prosperous. Yep. With power and authority to resist poverty. You know how you resist poverty? Resist every opportunity to take out a loan. 
to take out HP, uh-huh. higher purchase, finance, all of that stuff. That's how you resist poverty because instantly the borrower becomes servant to the lender. Yeah. God is not a lender, he's a giver. <laughs> in fact, God has very strict instructions to his people in, in regards to lending. And he even created a year of jubilee when all the debts were wiped out. Yeah. That's what Jesus came to announce, a debt-free life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. You resist poverty by resisting debt. How do you do that? We, oh, well, I, I won't be able to have anything. No, seek first the kingdom of God. Yeah. And all these things will be added to you. God does not want to deny you the pleasures of life and, and stuff and things. Stuff, stuff is stuff. Yeah. But always remember that stuff is always a tool before it's a toy. Mm-hmm. Always discover the tool in your stuff. Yeah. That means your car doesn't become so precious to you that you can't give anybody a lift in it because they might come in with dirty feet. <laughs> or they might make crumbs. Every car we ever got, chocolate was banned for at least two days. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, chocolate is one of life's pleasures, man. <laughs> to be enjoyed even when you're driving. Or the kids are, are, are passengers in the car or whatever, hallelujah. The Lord has given us everything, but we must possess everything that he has given us. We must take hold of it by faith. Everything that God has promised, everything that God has given us is contained in a promise. You know that? Let's say it again. I am who God says I am. I am who God says I am. I can do. I can do what God says I can do. I can have. I can have what God says I can have. And that doesn't mean you're going to have nothing. That means you're going to have everything that is good. Mm-hmm. Nothing that's ugly and bad and harmful, but everything that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In an abundance. Yeah. Everything that you need in an abundance. Amen. Yes, and if it's legitimate, even everything that you want, in an abundance. Oh, well, God will supply my needs, but he would supply my wants. Yes, he will if it's legitimate. He will give you the desires of your heart. That's just a fancy way of saying what you want. (laughs) He'll give you what you want. Oh, come on. Let's let's give religion a solid kick in the backside and remove it from our life experience once and for all and forever. Amen. Amen. (laughs) (laughs) Do you know that Jesus told 500 people to wait in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit? But only 120 of them were in the right place at the right time. I'm not saying that some of them didn't experience the Holy Spirit later, have another opportunity, but a lot of them, maybe some of them never did. But they weren't there. Imagine being there on that day. Imagine being there in, in in in, in these days of preparation. And then, oh, then suddenly it says, suddenly, don't you love the suddenlies of God? The surprises when he comes and surprises you with his presence. Yeah. <laughs> with his provision. Yeah. I mean, suddenly, there was a sound from heaven, like a mighty rushing wind. Mm-hmm. You look at the guy next to you and he's got a tongue of fire in his head. Come on. <laughs> it's like fire coming out of the top of his head. Like, whoa, what is that? And all of a sudden, you, you can't. Uh, my father used to say this way it's better felt than tail. Better, yeah. tell, better felt than tail. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So you could yeah. tell it all about it, but imagine being there. <laughs> you had to be there. The first time the, the church has just it's, it's been birthed. You were, at the, you were in the birthing room of the church. That upper room in Jerusalem was the birthing room yeah. of the church, it was the maternity ward yeah. of the church. Yeah. Imagine being there that day. You could hear about it later, but imagine being there that day. Yeah. Some, well, 380 people of my arithmetic is right, and I, had, I did get an O-level in arithmetic. Yeah. 380 people missed that. Yeah. 
who could have been there, who, were in, who had a personal invitation. But you know that God, God wraps up invitations in commands. Mm. Some people don't like commands. They go, nah, <laughs> yeah, it's just religious. He didn't understand that wrapped up in that command was an invitation. A glorious, oh, that master, I feel the Holy Spirit here right now. A glorious invitation yes. to be in the birthing room of the church. Yes. To be right there when the church was born. Wow. That's something to tell your grandkids, <laughs> your great grandkids. I was there. Oh, it's now it's recorded and, and it's written, but no, I was there. <laughs> Let me tell you what it was like. Wow. But I'll need to tell you, it was bare felt than tail. Mm. See, we have to possession ourselves according to the word. <laughs> it's when, you, when you possession yourself according to what God has said, that's when you align yourself with his throne. <laughs> And if we are going to live in the fullness of our inheritance, we have to position ourselves according to his word. Oh, I haven't got time to go to Jerusalem. I can so far away. Oh, I have a bunions by the time I reach there. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to walk. It's all right for that. Jesus, he's a donkey. When he came to Jerusalem, have you got to walk? I'll have to be up, I'll have to set my alarm and get up a bit early if I'm going to make it to church on Sunday morning. But the only problem is, you see, there was a command issued. And in that command, there was an invitation yeah. to come and experience his presence. To be right there. When he said what he was only going to say right there. At that moment in time, you heard it fresh. Something happens when you hear something fresh from heaven. Mm. Put some, deposit something on the inside of you that you draw on. That you draw on. That you draw on. And you keep drawing on it. You can keep drawing on it for years and it never runs out. It multiplies. Mm. He's the God of multiplication. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. <laughs> See, God gave us faith for a reason. He created us to live by faith for a purpose. So that we could reach out and take what is ours and refuse to let it go. We don't wrestle with flesh and blood. What's the wrestling? Somebody's trying to wrestle what you have out of you. Submit to God, not submit to the devil. You know, in the wrestling match, all that submission stuff. You know, when I was a wee boy, my brother was older. Brother was six years older. Man, I mean, he put me down on the ground, and he and he would put his knees into my biceps, and he would move his knees. And be, oh, he would say, "Submit!" And I'm like, "No, submit, no." Oh, okay, submit, 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 submit. Submit, <laughs> submit to God. You know that Jacob had to submit to God. Do you know why he had to submit to God in his wrestling match with Jesus, that pre-incarnated Jesus, pre-incarnation of Jesus? Do you know why he had to submit? So that he could be blessed. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. That's right. So he could be, he, he, he had to submit so he could be blessed. Yeah. From that day on, he walked differently. He walked as the blessed. Come on, he didn't walk as the cursed, he didn't walk as the conniving, scheming guy that he used to be. He walked as the blessed. He didn't walk as the guy who thought he could get everything by his own ingenuity, his own resources. He walked as the one who knew he was blessed. Hallelujah. (laughs) God gave us faith so we could take what is ours and refuse to let it go, refuse to have it wrestled from us. The only time you'll ever find yourself in a wrestling match with God is because he's trying to bless you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Always resist every attempt of the enemy to wrestle what you have out of you because he's trying to get the curse back on you. He's trying to remove that which you've been blessed with.
You see, sitting passively waiting for things to come to us is not going to work. (laughs) Faith works. Praying that our Father would give us our daily bread and then not taking what he's provided doesn't make a lot of sense. (laughs) That's just a religious prayer. That's not a prayer of faith. That's not a prayer of expectancy. Father, give us today our daily bread. You know what Jesus called the children's bread? Well, one thing was deliverance. Remember that woman came? Mm -hmm. For deliverance for her daughter. I might tell you, he's got deliverance for your daughter and for your son. For your children, for your grandchildren. He's got deliverance for them. Anyone that you give us today our daily bread, you're asking for that deliverance. Mm -hmm. That freedom for your family. To know him. To, to experience him in that place of intimacy where they discover, this is why I'm here. This is the reason for my being. Yeah. This is the purpose for my life. And the conviction of sin drops on them like a heavy weight and they go, oh no, I've missed it so long. Forgive me, Father, yeah. for missing you. For living a life of disappointment because I missed my appointment with you. I'll never miss another appointment. I'll never miss another appointment because missed appointments always result in disappointment. Mm-hmm. Praying that our Father would give us our daily bread and then not taking what he's provided. It doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, religion and religious tradition, they never make sense. No, no it doesn't. I mean, they just don't add up. Two and two becomes three, if you're lucky. (laughs) Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it. Do what? They take it by force. See, the Lord's been telling us for years, hasn't he, that the glory is here. Oh, the glory is here. Yes, the glory is here. I can sense his mighty presence in the very atmosphere. So whatever you may need, just reach out and receive and say it's mine. Yes, it's mine. I take it now, hallelujah, I take it. Now it's mine, I take it. Whatever I need, I reach out and receive. It's already been provided and I take it. I say it's mine, I take it now. Verse 12, and to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh, Joshua, Joshua spoke saying, remember, the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God is giving you rest and is giving you this land. Yeah. I love that word, remember. You know why I love that word, remember? Because it's a covenant word. Mm-hmm. It's a covenant yeah. word. Yeah. Jesus said, Do this in remembrance mm-hmm. of me. We went to that table this morning, we took that bread and we took that cup mm-hmm. and we did it in remembrance of all that he provided at the cross. Mm-hmm. We should never lose sight of what the Lord has previously said and done. But the work isn't over until all of the Lord's people have been established in the rest of faith and have possessed their inheritance. Seven tribes had failed, were still, uh, uh, had not come into their place of inheritance yet. You know, all around us, are, and I, I, that's, I get into trouble with, with this sort of stuff sometimes, but I, I can't sit content knowing that brothers and, I've got brothers and sisters on this island who aren't walking in the fullness of their inheritance. That's not a criticism, not in any shape or form. But I can't just sit here and go, thank you, Jesus. Us four are no more and just say, you know, we're so glad. Just like the guy, you know, the the, the Pharisees, I'm so glad I'm not like all these other people. No, no, I want to see all of God's people. That's always been in my heart from the very beginning, is to see all of God's people walking in the fullness of all of his provision. Amen. Amen. 
Verse 14, your wives, your little ones, your livestock shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side of the Jordan. But you shall pass before your brethren armed, all your mighty men of valour, and help them. Hallelujah. We are armed to help (laughs) our brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. Until the Lord has given your brethren rest and as he gave you and they also have taken possession of the land which the Lord your God has given them. Right. I said before, we're not here to compete, we're here to complete, to help complete. Mm-hmm. Then you shall return to the land of your possession and enjoy it. Yep. Then you shall return to the land of your possession and enjoy it. There's a level of enjoyment that we can't have yet because the rest of our brethren have not entered into that place of the rest of faith, of knowing and believing and fully uh, appropriating everything that Jesus accomplished for them at the cross. Because somewhere or other there's a lie come in that's robbed them, stolen from them, that's killing and destroying in their midst. Mm -hmm. Limiting them, hindering them. Then you shall return to the land of your possession and enjoy it, which Moses, the Lord's servant. See, <laughs> there's work to be done. Yeah. Amen. And after the work's done, then we can enjoy, sit back and enjoy. Yeah. There's going to be an eternity to enjoy. That's right. But right now, as long as there's... Any of our brethren who are still not in that place of receiving the fullness of their inheritance, and we work. Because every person out there, even the ones that are as lost as a goose in a hailstorm, as my old friend Randy Tins used to say. They're potential brothers and sisters. Why? Because Jesus went to the cross and paid the price for their salvation, healing and deliverance. And so we don't stop working until he comes. And when he comes, he finds us in the harvest field. Work it. Because that's what we're here to do. Otherwise, he'd have just quicked us off to heaven the moment we get born again. Amen. The only purpose for still being here is to reach the ones that haven't been reached yet. No other purpose. <laughs> Paul said to the, one of the churches in one of his letters, he said, I'd much rather go, but it's better for you that stay. So because it's better for you that stay, I'm willing to stay. We cannot fully enjoy our inheritance until all of our brethren are established because it's not just about us. And there's no us in them, there's only an us. The devil loves us in them, but we don't do us in them, it's just us. You've got to get the revelation of us. Get delivered from the us and them mentality, there's only us. There's only in us. There's people today who might not even want to shake my hand because they think I'm some kind of Pentecostal <laughs> scary person. But I'm going to keep reaching out my hand anyway because that's, that's one of us. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. They can slap that way if they want, but it's, he's one of us. She's one of us. I said it before, I just keep getting into trouble because I can't forget all of the good people who are still falling short of their full inheritance. Not a criticism, no condemnation in that statement whatsoever. Somehow or other, the enemy's got in like he always does with a lie Mm -hmm. against the character of our Father in heaven. We must be diligent to ensure that all of our brethren are established in the rest of faith and have taken possession of their land. We're not in competition to take the land. We all have a share. Amen. I'm not talking just about physical land. I'm talking here about, about the, 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 the spiritual land. The, the land that the enemy has been occupying, thinking it belongs to him now. But we're here to give him his marching order. Amen. He's a squatter. And he has no rights. <laughs> all the rights have been given to us. David read it earlier this morning. We were kicking off this morning. Sam, Sam 8. Yeah. Who is man that you are mindful of him? Yeah. That you want to take care of him? That you created him a little lower than yourself. You created him in your image and in your likeness to have dominion in the earth. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Come on. Yeah. 
to me a blessing, a source of blessing, a, a channel of blessing into the air. Hallelujah. I believe that's what the Lord is doing in our generation. That's what he's speaking. He's always been speaking it, and he's speaking it fresh to us. Will we take it? So they answered, verse 16, they answered Joshua saying, All that you command us we will do, and wherever you send us we will go. Just as we heeded Moses in all things, so we will heed you. Only the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your command and does not heed your words and all that you command him shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage. Your kingdom come, Lord. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The just shall live by faith. Please hear this. The just shall live by faith. So it goes without saying that even the just can die prematurely if they rebel against the command of King Jesus and do not heed his words. He said, do this. Remember, in, 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 in the, the instructions they have regarded the Lord's Supper, the, the communion, they're right there in, in Scripture. And, 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 and it, it says, Jesus, it, Paul reminds the, the Corinthian church, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Then he said, there's some people who eat and drink in an unworthy manner. Do you know that amongst our brethren there are those who still consider themselves unworthy even to go? Mm. To take of that bread. And some might just to try and push beyond something that even in their flesh will go. But they're drinking in an unworthy manner because they don't, they're not fully understanding or remembering everything that, or they didn't even have the revelation to begin with of everything that Jesus accomplished. And he said because of that some are weak some are sick, and some have died before their time. Some have fallen asleep. Can you catch that? So when we, when we truly remember, we're, we're saying, I'm strong. I'm strong because of what Jesus did. I'm taking this bread, and I'm taking this cup to remind myself that I am strong. Amen. I'm taking this bread, I'm taking this cup, and you can do it at home, you can do it anywhere you like. Hallelujah. You can take that bread and take that cup at any time in your life, anywhere you are. You have the full right and authority to do that. Hallelujah. And to say, I am healed because of what Jesus did at the cross. There's healing in this. There's healing. You can take that bread and you can take that cup and say, I will not die before my time. I will, I, will, I will walk in the fullness of God's promise in Psalm 91, but he will bless me with long life and length of days and show me his salvation every single day of that long life and lengthy days. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Wow. <laughs> but even the just, even those who have been justified by faith, even those who have been born again can miss it, can end up weak and sick and miss their destiny. The fullness of, miss the fullness of their destiny. Mm-hmm. If they die before their time, they'll still be in heaven, glory to God, but they don't have to go before their time. Mm-hmm. That's why we're responsible to get this message out there, to disciple people in this message. Yes. Saved, healed, and delivered. The people of the world under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Saved, healed, and delivered. Prepared, strengthened, equipped. Fully provided for with hearts that are prepared with that knowledge and that revelation that we've been provided for. Mm. We have provisions. We can cross over everything. Hallelujah. That stands in our way and stands against us as a, as a limitation. Amen. Yeah. Prepared. We're going to cross over that Jordan. Ah, but it's a big river. It's at full speed. Oh, it's wide. I can't swim. <laughs> Just stand still and you'll see the salvation of our God. You're not going to have to swim across that river. Just like 40 years ago, your fathers did not have to swim across the Red Sea. They didn't have to build a boat like Noah. No, when it was time, when they took that first priest, put that first step in the water. And it says that the water stopped up all the way up to Adam. All the way to Adam. Hallelujah. The curse has been stopped all the way to Adam. 
for those who will take his word, believe his word, and step out in faith on that word and refuse to be moved from that word, regardless of where the arguments come from or how familiar the person who brings the argument might be to you. There's a best one for you. The thief only ever comes. Jesus said it. I'm going to take his word on it. The thief only ever comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. If someone comes to you, doesn't matter who they are, doesn't matter how familiar you are with them and, and what they're saying is trying to steal something of the revelation of what Jesus accomplished for you at the cross, just say, no. No. I don't have to listen to that. Because as soon as he can steal, he's entered He's gained an entrance in your life where he can kill. And he is never content until he's destroyed. Killing's not enough for him. He wants to destroy. Because he's a destroyer. That's who he is. He does it of who he be. But Jesus came to destroy all the works of the enemy. Son of God was manifested to destroy all the works of the enemy. And as he is, so are we. Because he said, I'm giving you my authority. To destroy the destroyer. Amen. <laughs> We've been trained to live by faith, to possess our personal inheritance, but it's not just about us. And that's why it's so important that we move on into the fullness of our role as those who will assist others in taking their land. Amen. That's why it doesn't concern me when there's not, this, this room isn't full of people this morning. I'd much rather it was for the people who could then go and do what they've been commissioned to do. Mm-hmm. But Jesus selected 12 yeah. that they might be with him so that he could send them out. Yeah. Because until they'd been with him, they weren't equipped to go out. So we see everyone living in the fullness of their inheritance. Take the land, people. Take the land, walk right over that river Jordan and take the land. What's that river Jordan for you? Because God's calling you. It's time to cross. Have your heart prepared. Have pro- recognize that you've, all provisions have already been made, that he's already given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. There's no reasons, no excuses. Jesus took all of the reasons, hallelujah, yes. all of the excuses, and he crucified them. Hallelujah. <laughs> So that he took, come on, my shakabo. So every manifestation of the curse that used to be a hindrance and a stumbling block to you has been taken away. And all that's left is the blessing of God, which empowers you to do everything that he's ever asked you to do. And not just to do it, but to do it well. Hallelujah. Not just to prosper, but to have good success. Take the land, people. Take the land. Cross right over that river, Jordan, and... Take the land, I will take the land, Father. I will take the land. I will cross right over that river, Jordan, and take the land. How are we going to do it? Because the glory is here. Yes, the glory is here. I can sense your mighty presence. In the very atmosphere So whatever I may need I reach out and receive And say it's mine Yes, it's mine I take it now Cause the glory is here Yes, the glory is here I can sense your mighty presence in the very atmosphere. And so whatever I may need, I reach out and receive and say it's mine. Oh yes, it's mine. I take it now. Hallelujah. You know, in the mouth of a child, that can be a very selfish statement. Because a child is saying to someone else, you can't have that because it's mine. But you see, for the children of God, (laughs) 
We can make that statement. It's mine because there's more than enough for everybody. Hallelujah. And every child individually must take that responsibility to say, yes, that's mine. I take it now. I take it now. And by my taking it, I'm not denying anybody else. And by my taking it, I'll have a testimony for everybody else that you can take yours. There's that which is labelled yours that you can recognise and say, that's mine, I take it now. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, the glory. I, 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 right now, just, please, we're in, this, we're in this presence right now. Whatever it is you need, I don't know what it, you, you don't know. I don't know. But he knows and you know. So take it. I just want to encourage you. Everything's been provided, whatever it is. Just take it now. Maybe you need more courage, more strength. Maybe you need physical healing. Just to be, you know, I can't go because of this and that. And the next thing, well, just take all. Take the answer to all of your questions. Take the 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 the, the solution to all of the reasons and excuses that you have. No more to deal with. Oh, the glory is here. Yes, the glory is here. I can sense your mighty presence in the very atmosphere. So whatever I may need, I reach out and receive and say it's mine. Oh yes, it's mine. I take it now, and I will take the land, Father. I will take the land across right over that river, Jordan, and take the land. In the name of Jesus, Father, as we step out into a new week of new opportunities, I pray, Father, that we would take every opportunity given to us, Lord, and take what's been given. Take back the land. Lord, dispense your blessing wherever we go. Speak blessing over people. Speak blessing and release blessing into the lives of those who desperately need to know that you are the blesser of people. That you are the one who only has blessing for them. Let them know that conviction, Lord, and let them experience your presence. Lord, that will change their lives forever. Change the course of their lives forever. Change the direction of their lives forever that you may be glorified in our land, in all of the earth. Yes. Glorify your name, Father, yes. in all of the earth. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.